Hello and welcome to Conquering Alba, where we take you to the historical places that help make Scotland what it is today. Welcome back to part 2 as we visit the inside of Glasgow Cathedral. The building of Glasgow Cathedral began in 1136 and took about 350 years to finish. The cathedral was dedicated to St Mungo, the Christian mercenary in the area during the 6th century AD. His tomb has attracted pilgrims from all over, therefore the site was seen as a holy and a resource of grace. The Gothic cathedral's architecture embodied the outreach of the gospel and the entire process of the salvation of the troubled humanity. With the Protestant Reformation there were dramatic changes. There was a switch from an elaborate liturgy and ceremony to a planned service of Bible lessons, preaching, prayer to God alone, congregational singing and the sacrament of communion as a communal meal of thanksgiving sitting at tables. Reformers cleared this building's interiors of all pictures, statues and numerous chapels. The Reformed Church of Scotland took a long time to decide whether its ministry should be exercised by bishops and priests in dioceses or by bishops and elders in presbyteries. In 1690, the Presbyterian system became definitive. Subsequently, bishops and the Episcopalian order had no further role. In the recent centuries, the appearance of the interior and strict simplicity of worship was relaxed to conform with changing tastes in church art, architecture and the forms of worship. But the origins of the cathedral's worship are still in the Scottish Reformation Book of Common Order from 1565.
In the wake of the Reformation, Glasgow Cathedral was split into three Protestant parish churches, the Inner High Kirk in the choir, the Outer High Kirk in the west end of the nave, and the Barony Kirk in the crypt. In fact, as late as 1579, Protestants still wanted to destroy Glasgow Cathedral to use as a quarry for smaller Protestant churches. They even got so far as hiring workmen to see to its destruction. Fortunately, incorporations of the city gathered arms and took possession of the cathedral to present its premature end. Repairs in the 1800s reversed the alterations that divided the building into three parish churches.
The cathedral is one of the finest buildings of the 1200s to survive in mainland Scotland. Parts of it are older still. Building fabric from Bishop Jocelyn's time, roughly 1174 to 1199, is still standing. He is recorded as gloriously enlarging his cathedral in 1181. Fragments from the previous cathedral have also been found. When a fire halted Jocelyn's work, it fell to his successors, notably Bishop William de Bonington, 1233 to 1258, to finish the cathedral. The end result was a Gothic creation consistent of rows of pointed arches, windows with slender tracery, an unusual array of three vaulted aisles around the preceptory and choir. The intention was to house a shrine to St Kentgern at main level behind the high altar to complement the saint's tomb in the crypt beneath. Grown appreciation of the qualities of medieval architecture led to another change. By 1835, both the Outer High Kirk and the Barony Kirk had left the premises. This left the great medieval cathedral to return to something approaching its former glory. In 1836, the cathedral became state property, and by 1857, the entire building was looked after by the state, and a campaign of restoration began and continues to this day. If you head down these stairs to the lower church of the cathedral, you will find St Mungo's tomb. It is believed to date back to his death in the 7th century. Every year the cathedral holds a service on the 13th of January to commemorate his life.
The pulpitum, or choir screen, was built in the 15th century. It is the only screen of its kind left in a Scottish secular church that dates from before the Reformation. We hope you've enjoyed today's visit here at Glasgow Cathedral. It is great to see how a medieval building such as this has been preserved so well, considering what has happened to it throughout history. If you have enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe for more of Scotland's historical places, and until next time, Alba Gobra.